Hi there, knitting friends. Welcome to Korpari Knits. Uh, this is my brand new YouTube channel and also my very first knitting podcast. So welcome. Uh, my name is Laura. I'm coming to you from Finland and I have my notes here. So, yeah. Um, it says here <laughs> that I ought to start with the, with the name of the channel. And like I said, the name of this channel is Korpari Nits. And uh, Korpari uh, is a nickname of mine because it's this um, nickname version of my family name. People know us as the Korparis, like the Kardashians. So. Hence the name Korparinits. I'm also in Instagram with the same handle Korparinits, but there is uh, currently only one picture because my um, relationship with <laughs> social media is a bit difficult. But maybe now that I uh, finally came up with the channel, I'll uh, start being more active there as well, but um, I'm not going to make any promises. Uh, but yeah, uh, I've been having uh, the intention of coming up with the knitting channel for a while now. Mm, I learned to knit um, at the start of the uh, COVID pandemic era, so probably uh, four or three years ago. And ever since, knitting has been a part of my daily life. So I wanted to um, create a channel uh, for to be able to connect connect with other knitters and share this amazing hobby. I thought I'd first present you a finished object and then move on to whips and maybe future plans or stuff like that. So I think these uh, like my podcasts will, or blogcasts, I don't know, but these videos <laughs> will um, go on with the kind of traditional way of first uh, presenting the uh, FOs and then webs and so on. But yeah, uh, I only have one uh, finished object to show you today. So uh, this is a balaclava. And it's the November balaclava, I believe, by my favorite things knitwear. And here's also a little footage of me wearing the balaclava, as I didn't wear it on the video. So now you can see it a little bit better and the amazing pattern on it as well. I used... Um, Silklana Aweta uh, in the color mm, 236 and I believe the name of the color was uh, was Desert Rose, I think. And then uh, mohair, of which I only have <laughs> This tiny one left, and it was uh, mohair by Kennard, uh, but uh, I don't remember um, the name of the colors. But as I said, I'll be putting it down below, so so you'll find it there. And yeah. Um, I've actually had the pattern for this for quite a while now and um, I've uh, cast it on a couple of versions but now <laughs> this one was the first one to actually uh, be finished because uh, I ended up not liking the colors of the yarns and the yarns I used previously were actually mm, too thick for this pattern. So I'm very glad that uh, now 
it's finally finished. Um, it features this very beautiful uh, broken rib stitch and then some uh, ribbing in the bottom part. And uh, I finished this in January, I believe. And it was quite of uh, quite a um, fast knit. Yeah, mm, I believe this was actually like my very first object where I've uh, hold um, mohair and wool together. And um, well, maybe you really can't see it in this lighting, but if you're a knitter, you probably know how. <laughs> how um, mohair and other yarns look like hold, held, held together so so they are this lovely um fluffy uh, and very luxurious um luxurious um like fabric and i do like how it looks but um i'm not so fond of the way it feels uh, my skin is not uh, sensitive for any uh, wools or mohairs per se, but um, I don't know if I would um, knit, for example, a sweater held with mohair. And I was kind of worried that the mohair would irritate my neck, but it didn't. So, so yeah, but... Um, I must say that it, this definitely is too warm, at least for me, uh, as a bit of a more of a sweaty <laughs> kind of girly. So I think um, when the weather uh, starts to get warmer in the spring, this will be probably be a bit too hot to wear. But now in the winter, it's very Nice and the color is absolutely amazing. Uh, it's funny because, uh, as you can probably see, uh, the colors are kind of different, uh, but together they created this amazing color that's probably like or is. Um, even deeper than the one you can see in the camera in this lighting. But yeah, so uh, that was the very first finished object of this channel. So yay! Okay, so moving on to uh, works in progress, aka whips. Um, firstly, I could present you the most recent one that I cast it on uh, just a couple of days ago and it's really not that much and all the progress I have is all <laughs> curled up but maybe you'll still get some idea of the project and I'm sorry if you can hear the uh, clinking of the needles. I uh, try to make so that the sound won't be a constant one, but yeah. So as you can see, there are stripes. Uh, white and these very uh, vibrant pink ones. Uh, like kind of magenta or fuchsia. Fuchsia, as we say in Finnish. I, I believe that's something like fuja in English. But yeah. And um, this is the start of the stripe pipe sweater by uh, Veronika Limperi, aka um, Kutovakiga, here in YouTube. And it's funny because um, I've been noticing this uh stripe boom in the knitting world and mm, i don't know i at least have not traditionally been that much into stripes but but um 
I actually just a couple of days ago I did this <laughs> color analysis thingy online uh, in just some random websites and I found out that I'm a um, cool winter and that these very um, cool and vibrant uh, colors suit me well and I have noticed that before I really like uh, for instance um, mint green and lavender and purple and now this um, teal and turquoise is more of a raisins find uh, but but yeah I, I I wonder if you would call this like a jewel tone but um, I've grown interest towards them because I think my skin really looks very um, um I totally forgot what I was uh, talking about but anyway I was talking about the stripe hype sweater and about the color analysis thing and me being a cool winter so um I had a couple of these quite um like very uh, I don't know bold and vibrant uh colors in my stash and uh they are uh a yarn called Seitsemän Veljestä by Novita that is uh the biggest yarn brand in Finland and also the most traditional one and uh, the Seitsemän Veljestä yarn is like the one everybody learns to uh, knit with at school and they carry it in all um, grocery stores and supermarkets here in Finland and um I think the pattern calls for a DK weight yarn and uh, this is actually Aran so um, this is maybe a bit uh, too thick yarn for this pattern but um, as I said I have plenty of it in stash in different colors so I really wanted to use it for something because now that I've um, I've uh, knit more and I've knit more socks just the Saint Saint Veliesta is traditionally uh, like it, uh, it's meant to be a um, sock yarn but it's a very thick one so uh, I've recently found when knitting more socks that I actually don't like it that much because I prefer these uh, thinner yarns like more of a, a finger in weight yarns. There is quite a lot of it in my stash show, so um, I ought to use it up for something. And even though um, my tension actually actually looks kind of nice here in the camera, uh, I was very worried that it'll uh, end up very holy. But at least now that this still hasn't been uh, blocked or uh, of course because the project is not finished yet I think that it looks kind of nice. There are some holes you can see the light coming through but I don't think it's bad at all. And about the color analysis I was talking about uh, from that from the color palette I got, I somehow got this courage to try out uh, these very um, bright colors. Uh, I think I don't have like anything in this very um, pure white shade, but I think it suits me kind of nice. So I chose it to be the main color of this project. And um, I'm, I'm thinking of using uh, for instance, this very bold uh, lime green, uh, like maybe as the next contrast color, and then uh, this um, very like um, D 
deep dark blue and uh, this very bright uh, orange and then one more of a muted uh, teal one and um, yeah so this will be a very uh, bright colored one uh, I've been wearing these more of a of muted colors lately but now as the spring is coming uh, in a couple of months I somehow felt that now it's the time to try out even bolder colors so I'm very excited about that. Uh, this is just the start of the uh, upper back by the way so let's see how long it will take me to finish this. I'm not that fast knitter I'm constantly <laughs> puzzled <laughs> by the pace some knitters here in YouTube are finishing their projects and I believe my channel will never be one of those in which I would present like 40 pictures, uh, no 40, not 40 pictures but uh, 40 projects a year because I just don't have that in me. If you are, that's totally all right. But I think it's also totally all right to create less pieces. And next is another sweater whip that's really been in hibernation for a while now. But I thought I'd present it anyway. And, uh, oh my, the yarn is all all over the place here. But um, this is a sweater called Tenna by this uh, Finnish designer Retta Pellikka, who has her own website with the name Arnitz. And it's this gorgeous, gorgeous um, Icelandic wool sweater. This is a uh, little uh, and it's knit bottom up as you can see and uh, I'm in like I'm knit, I've knit like one uh, third of the yoke I would say. I started this project um, back in last September or something and it's been in this <laughs> state for like I don't know a couple of months now because <laughs> uh, it's actually my very first color work project my uh, absolute goal for last year was learning color work and that I did but uh, the first color work project is still yet to finish <laughs> so so yeah, but um, I don't know, it's very, I love the pattern, uh, there will be more of this, what do you call this, triangles or something like that, uh, and I've used um, uh, two contrasting colors up the this point, this um, kind of a uh, Celery, celery green it was maybe called and this like ash kind of beige or gray I don't know I'll as I said put also these color names in the description box but yeah mm, and the main color is this gorgeous a uh, bottle green one that you really <laughs> cannot really see in this lighting. It looks way more blue here. Maybe it's because of uh, the sweater of my shirt. I maybe should have put on a white shirt or something, but let's see about that next time. But yeah, and it has these, I don't know if you can, can see these either, but there are these blue speckles. Very, very beautiful yarn. 
that I think also suits me very well. And uh, at least when I have finished this, uh, I'll uh, show some pictures in which you can see the like real color better. But yeah, mm, this is from uh, this magazine, Novita magazine, uh, from uh, the winter of 2021. So, um, the pattern uh, is not that recent one anymore. I can probably flash you the pictures of the finished piece. So, um, it'll look something like this. And uh, I believe... Uh, Reta Pelekka has now come up with the English version as well. At least I saw it in uh, Ravelry at some time. Uh, but I must say that um, at least then I uh, noticed a, an, a mistake in the gauge because it was off by one of the one it said here in the magazine. So I don't know if... Uh, the pattern has uh, since been corrected. But yeah, mm, and uh, I don't remember if I mentioned this already, but it's knit bottom up and also it doesn't have any short rows or anything. So I think I'll, um, I'll be inserting them uh, after I finished the yoke and uh, Mm, I, I think if I was uh, if I was to start uh, knitting the sweater now, I probably mm, either would not or <laughs> then I would uh, uh, make it so that I would be able to knit it uh, top down because especially right now it's in this very irritating state uh, that it's kind of hard to try it on as it sits somewhere in here and then you kind of have to like um, hold the, the sleeves on with your hands and well if you knit uh, well um, if you have knit um, bottom up sweaters you know what I'm talking about but I think the um uh, yoke pattern is very nice and I love the yarns and it's gonna be uh, more of this um outdoor sweater for me to wear. Uh I don't know if I'm able to finish it <laughs> uh before the spring so so I'll maybe have to wait to the fall but then I'll be able to wear it in uh when uh, foraging mushrooms and stuff, so that'll be very nice. Yeah, mm, then I have a couple of sock projects here. Um, the first one is this just gorgeous, gorgeous color. This Amazing mint green with speckles on it. And there are these um kind of neony um uh, green slash um yellow ones and then pink ones and blue ones and and also this um, more of a uh, orange like ones uh, the yarn uh, is by hedgehog fibers uh, sock yarn i believe in the color fly and uh, i actually started to knit the 
Mm, her mine is everyday socks. But then I found that um, the pattern got kind of lost in the yarn. So I thought um, I'd let it shine by itself. Well, I did uh, knit the cuff with a um, twisted rib because this is actually more my preferred style of, of uh, knitting the cuffs if there isn't any uh, like lace or anything. Uh, well, uh, I've knit a couple of stocks like it's knitting the cuff in this rib all the way, but also I tend to cast on with this twisted rib style also in the oh, only the upper part of the cuff and uh, yeah I don't know if you actually call this twisted rib or half twisted rib because as you can see I've only knit the knit stitches uh, through the back loop I'm so sorry if the camera is not focusing because I'm only uh, filming this with my phone. But maybe you'll get some idea out of it. Yeah, uh, so I don't know if you call the twisted rib only the ones in which you also need the pearl stitches from the back loop. But actually, I think. The stripe hype sweater uh, had the exact same looking kind of rib and it was called twisted rib, so I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> whatever uh, this is called, I really like the look of it. And yeah, um, but yeah, as I told you, um, I cast it on uh, the Hermione's everyday socks, but then decided not to uh, knit the pattern of those, but um, the um, amount of stitches is from that pattern. And I, I'll think, I, I'm thinking I'll make uh, a short row heel and maybe uh, carry on with the twist rib uh, on the, with the, um, the second and a third needle so that the twisted rib will carry on all the way to the toe like in the upper part of the sock but yeah let's see and then another sock project uh, in metal needles so if you can hear the clinging I'm sorry but uh, this yarn I've actually dyed, like hand dyed myself with um, beetroot, I believe, and it's it's this gorgeous a uh, warm orange color that also has like mm, bits like uh, the color kind of. A vibrant one, so that these, so that there are these um, more of a um, red and more light tones. Yeah, but uh, so I've dyed the yarn myself, and I believe that the yarn I used was maybe Nalle by Novita. That's also one of these, like. Uh, supermarket yarns we have in Finland and uh, the pattern I'm using is called the Piirakkasukat because maybe you can see that the lace uh, kind of resembles the Karelian pie this uh, traditional uh, Finnish or Karelian uh, pastry we have I'll insert a picture of, of them in here. I believe uh, that's where the the pattern or 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 the lace pattern 
has got it, its name. And uh, it is in my understanding that the Pirakka Sukat uh, is, uh, I, I, I don't know if the pattern is originally by Novita, I believe. Uh, I'll look that up as well and put the information in the description box. But um, uh, it is in my understanding that the Pirakka Sukat are also one of those ones the aunties and grannies have been knitting in Finland for for uh, for well not centuries maybe but but for generations at least and yeah uh, I think the lace is very beautiful and uh, also very um engaging uh, and kind of easy one and I'm knitting these for a friend who actually already had her birthday <laughs> with the theme warm and orange. And because uh, these warm tones really are not my jam and I don't like wearing them, at least near my face. So I thought that, hey, what would be more perfect color for her? And she actually uh, really fell in love with it. So uh, I'll I hope I'll get to finish this one soon, so uh, then she'll have her socks. I actually already uh, gifted her <laughs> the first one because I felt that I must have something to gift her for her birthday party. So, so yeah, but um, this is very nice and easy pattern. I'll put it. Um, in the description box as well but I must say it's unfortunately only in Finnish but uh, maybe you can use a Google Translator or something because it's not hard at all there are there are only um, like knit stitches and purl stitches and then uh, two stitches knit together and uh, this Ulivetto um, Kavennus it's called in Finnish, um, now I cannot remember what's it called in English, so I'll put it somewhere on the screen. But yeah, and then a uh, yarn overs. So uh, nothing fancier than that, but the finished um, look of the pattern is very nice. Um, yeah. And then I believe uh, I only have uh, one uh, project to go and it's this um, half finished object, one mitten here, one finished one and then one that is still yet to go and uh, these are the uh, Lover Mittens by uh, Milena Paulina uh, and it's this uh, they, they have this uh, very nice um, and practical flap uh, and they also are in a broken rib stitch and I actually think the uh, pattern also calls for a lighter uh, and a thinner yarn and uh, hence the uh, there's this um, bump uh, <laughs> that the uh, flap and the part uh, under it creates so if I'm to make this again I will uh, choose a yarn that uh, uh, is the kind requested in the pattern but I still think these are very beautiful and these are gonna go to my sister because uh, she requested these um, mittens with a flap already uh, as, a, uh, as a Christmas gift but mm, well I didn't finish them on time but um, she will be gifted these uh, in um within a month or so 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 i guess that's all right 
Mm, the yarns I've used are um, the Peru Peruvian uh, Highland Wool by Phil Galana uh, in the color uh, Red Squirrel, I believe. And then some mohair uh, by Lang Yarns. I don't remember um, what color, but I'll be putting it down below. And these are actually uh, the first mittens I've ever knit. And uh, I think the, it was kind of a nice pro process. And I'm very uh, proud of how I managed to uh, knit up the thumb. Uh, there definitely were holes when I picked up the stitches, but then uh, when finishing it, I managed to uh, hide all the holes, so I'm very glad. And uh, my sister is more into these uh, warm tones like brown and uh, like um, very dark, uh, like pine green, so I think she like this color very much. Those were all my finished objects and webs. But then um, I have this book that's not my own, uh, but it's from the library. Uh, I loaned it, so I of course have to take it back as well. But but now that I have it here, I thought I'd show you it. And it's called. Neulojan käsikirja, that would be something like uh, the Knitter's Handbook. And uh, here it says uh, 300 pintaneulen mallia. Uh, that means uh, 300 um, like knit stitch patterns. And it is, uh, or uh, the book is exactly that. So there are these different kinds of stitches presented. There are plenty of these in here. And there are more complex ones and then more easy ones. And I thought it'd be very nice to uh, try out like a bunch of these knit patterns and to like maybe make a sort of a, a quilt um, quilt uh, what's the word quilt blanket out of out of them so that the blanket would have like all these different patterns and it would or it could have like other colors in the world, so that would be a very nice project to have, and also it would be a great um, stash busting project. But but we'll see. The author is uh, Charlotte Rouillon, I believe uh, she's French. The original name of this book is. Uh, La Bible du Tricot, La Bible du Tricot, or something like that. <laughs> I have actually studied French back in high school, but uh, it's been quite a while, so excuse me my pronunciation. Uh, but yeah, um, I tried to find uh, whether there is an English version of this one, but uh, I, I think I didn't find one, but maybe there is one. And also uh, ones with other languages as well. But um, I believe um, it's only available like as an ebook now, because I, I believe the... Mm, I don't recall what is Bainos in English, but uh, 
I'll put that on the screen as well, but the, the Binos has run out, I believe, so you really cannot get this book like as a physical book uh, anymore, at least uh, from uh, bookstores, maybe in some uh, thrift stores or something, and I think that's what I'm going to be doing from now on, that I'll I'll try to find this book from some trip store or if not this book then some other book with the different kinds of stitches because uh, I really like a physical book that you can uh, take out of your bookshelf and then uh, explore all these gorgeous patterns and then just cast on the ones you like at that moment. Maybe I could purchase the ebook at some points, but but we'll see. Yeah, but um, that was all of the things I I had to show you. Mm, then I could I could say a bit something about the about the future I have in mind for this channel. So. Uh, I'd like to make these uh, knitting podcasts um, and maybe at some point uh, some vlogs maybe as well or some uh, like project blogs or something but let's see thought that a, a realistic um, uh, uh, like pace for me to publish these videos would be something like once a month, mm, though I would really like to uh, film and publish even more of these videos and do it more frequently, like uh, maybe once in every two weeks or something. But uh, I tend to mm, create a pressure for myself of these things and I don't want for this channel to um, to be a place or a thing of which I have to stress about so I'm not going to make any promises uh, we'll see how it goes and also uh, as I don't have um, almost any uh, editing experience <laughs> or anything so I really don't know how much it will take me to edit this video and actually publish it so we'll see uh, but um, I'm very glad that my knitting channel is finally here and I hope uh, you'll enjoy it as well now in the end of the video I could also say a few words about my uh, knitting intentions this year so my first um, goal is to learn cables because that's actually something I uh, don't yet know how to do it and uh, the as I mentioned earlier uh, when talking about the stripe hype sweater that I feel that um, in addition to the stripe boom in the knitting world there really is uh, at least in my opinion a cable knitting boom as well and I really like to take part of that as well this is more of a no-brainer but still I think it's very important to put it out there that yes I would like to finish all the webs I have from last year especially the um, then one here because there really isn't that much to go anymore and I think I would love the finished piece so yeah excuse me I just burped <laughs> uh, yeah uh, and uh, also the one uh, really um strong intention would be to need more from stash because um well i don't actually believe my or think my stash is uh that um 
large or big, but there are plenty of yarn that I haven't um, I haven't found use for. At some point, I could maybe uh, film a video where I would uh, expose my yarn stash to you and uh, also mm, tell you about the ideas I'm planning to use the yarns for. But uh, let's see. Yeah, but um, that was probably it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I'll um, put my uh, Ravelry and uh, my Instagram handles uh, also in the description box. So you can follow me there if you wish. And uh, please uh, come watch my videos again. Uh, whenever that is and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching and happy knitting. Bye!